will show you lots of really, really delicious food. Hi lovelies, welcome to What I Eat on a Special Day. Today is my birthday and I am going to spend most of the day cooking because I love to eat. I'm a massive foodie. I'm going to cook food today from Asia, from the Middle East, head over to Mexico and then back to Japan. All of today's food is vegan, vegetarian and plant-based. It's all super healthy, super nutritious and will impress anybody. So if you have a date night coming up or if you have a special occasion or perhaps a guest coming over, all of this food will probably wow them. Some of the food is easier and some of the food is harder and we're going to have some fun along the way because it is my birthday. So today will be a fun packed what I eat on a special day. If you haven't already, please do hit the thumbs up, like this video, subscribe to my channel and comment in the comment section below. If you dare, guess my age. I'm thinking because I went plant-based, I look a lot younger. I've certainly lost about 17 kilograms, so guess my age. Let's go and have some fun and get kicking. Today's first dish is a Thai soup with very, very traditional flavors. The only ingredient I'm missing is a lemon. But I have a lemon tree. And I think it's mocktail o'clock, so I should get a few small lemons. Special days deserve pretty drinks. We haven't drank alcohol in about two and a half years, and I would like a pretty drink all day long today. I love beautiful aesthetics, they make me smile. So this large, pretty gin glass, I will add a slice of lemon, and a pink umbrella, a pretty reusable straw, and some pre-chilled Robinson summer fruit squash. And that's my mocktail. It's quick, it's cheap, it's pretty, and it's tasty. And it's definitely birthday worthy, or any celebration worthy. Okay, now I have a beautiful and special mocktail. I can make my trademark Thai Tom Car soup. I was taught how to make this soup the traditional way on the island of Koh Lanta in an outdoor Thai cuckoo school Ooh, Christmas 2009. And I've been putting smiles on my friends and family's faces with this Thai soup ever since. These are my chosen ingredients for this soup. It's so handy having dried shiitake, I buy restaurant quantity, and dried black cloud ear fungus and soya twist, always in the cupboard at hand. These are my flavors. You don't need all of these, but for me, each of these ingredients makes the soup exquisite. This Thai soup is our household's traditional Sunday brunch because the tastes are just sensational. For every dish I ever cook, I always prepare all of my ingredients before I start cooking. In this soup, I use garlic in two ways, so let's peel it. I need approximately four whole cloves, crushed whole with the flat of a knife, be careful. This will be boiled. Then I need about half a bulb or so, finely chopped, as this will be fried and add as a topping. It is so worth it. You'll start adding it to loads of dishes. I use a large piece of ginger, approximately 10 centimeters in length, cut it around five millimeters wide. This is used to flavor the soup, but it's not to be eaten. You remove it before you eat the soup. We need the juice of one lemon, but my lemons are so tiny, I'll use two. I finely slice two spring onions as an optional topping for the soup. I finely slice half a chili to flavor the soup. And if I'm feeling spicy that day, I will finely slice chili to add to a topping bowl to add raw to the finished soup. I'm slicing my lemongrass stalks into three pieces, removing the outer layers that fall off and bashing the stalks with the back of a knife to release their flavors. Again, be careful. The flavors I'm adding to this soup are so good for you. Each ingredient has so many health benefits. They're packed full of medicinal properties, antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, good for cholesterol, weight loss, blood pressure, detoxifying, stress, and great for your hair and skin. I cut my small plum tomatoes in half. I peel a couple of Chinese cabbage leaves, slice down the middle, and chop into generous inch pieces. Ah, it's time to add some love into this dish. Try this sometime when you have guests over or to surprise your other half or your children. In all Thai dishes, I cut my carrots into love hearts. 
it easy and it makes the person eating your food feel loved. Watch carefully. They taught me how to do this in Thai cookery school and give it a try sometime. See if it puts a smile on a face. We love adding fresh coriander to soup, salads, curries, tacos, guacamole. I'm cutting small pieces into a toppings bowl so each person can add the amount they want. I use a large heavy pan and to my two liters of water, I add my flavorings. Four tablespoons of Tom Kha paste, my garlic cloves, lemongrass, ginger and chili, and my dried ingredients, my shiitake mushrooms, clara ear fungus, and soya twirls. I soak them for 10 minutes before I begin to boil. While my dried ingredients soften, I heat olive oil in a pan on medium heat and fry my finely chopped garlic till it's golden brown, then add to a toppings bowl for later. These are my soup toppings. Sometimes I have raw chili in a bowl too. Spicy! I've set my heavy pan to full heat and now it's boiling. My room is amazingly fragrant. Time to add my carrots a couple of minutes before my other ingredients. I add one teaspoon of coconut palm sugar. Yes, I did forget this from the ingredients photo, sorry. With seven minutes of cooking time left, I add my tomatoes and mushrooms. Two minutes later, I add five to eight kaffir lime leaves for the final four minutes of cooking. Today, I chose flavor over health and I added the pre-cooked basmati rice for the last three minutes. The healthiest option is the brown rice, but these packets are just so convenient. Stir that in. For the final two minutes of cooking, I add half a tin of coconut milk, my lemon juice, and for the final 30 seconds, my Chinese cabbage to keep it crunchy. Fantastic! It's time to eat the tastiest Tom Kha soup. If you can only find Tom Yum paste, use this, but the two flavours are distinctly different, both delicious. Tom Kha with rice is my favourite breakfast soup. I think from spending so much time in Thailand, it's quite a traditional way to have breakfast. You can tell how tasty this soup is. I just saw my hubby's hand schnaffling for the toppings. The ginger, kaffir lime leaves and lemongrass are to be removed before eating. I serve the soup with these ingredients for my guests to remove themselves. I feel this gives immense culture to the dish. Oh, fur baby kisses. For lunch today, I wanted something super healthy and refreshing. It's been a really quite warm day here, so for late afternoon lunch, this is what I really fancy. I've got all the rainbow colors, so and I've got all my nutrients in there. I'm not concerned about calories. So I've got carrot sticks and I've got pickles. So I've got pickled onions and I've got jalapenos. Great for your gut health of pickles. You should include them in your diet if you haven't already. Um, I've got pink cherry tomatoes and yellow peppers and grilled olives. These ones are the garlic, love them. Spring onions, hubby loves them. Orange peppers, olives with piri piri chilies in them. They're hot. Cucumber sticks, love them, dips. I've got red peppers. Oh, now I've got naughty. We like a little bit of pita bread every now and again. A little bit, that's okay. Tortilla chips, have not had these, oh, maybe in a year. But I love them with guacamole, it's my birthday, so we can have a few tortilla chips, no problem. Yellow cherry tomatoes, grilled olives. These are the chili ones, oh, they're great. And that is my crudite meze. That I think any vegan or plant-based or vegetarian really enjoy. So, I've made some hummus to go with this meze. I'm just about to make the guacamole. I've taken this guacamole recipe to parties for years and everyone's always loved it and asked how to make it, so hopefully you'll enjoy it too. I adore coriander. It's one of those flavors that you love it or you hate it, and I love it. We're gonna use more lemons. I feel like we've used lemons like in nearly everything today, but luckily that's why I have a lemon tree in my garden. I think we're eating a lot of food today, but it's all healthy, it's all nutritious, and it's all very good for you. Let's go make some guacamole. Oh, if you haven't already, please do hit the like button and subscribe. I'll be making lots and lots of what I eat in the days, all healthy, all nutritious, and all super, super tasty. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Let's go make some guacamole. 
I love eating raw veg. So much nutrition, so tasty and fresh and so low on calories. A brilliant rule I follow every day is I try and eat every color of the rainbow in fruit and veg as the colors tend to represent different nutrients. So if I eat a wide range of colored vegetables and fruits at least one meal a day I feel happy I'm eating a wide range of nutrients that are all benefiting my body. Good rule to follow lovelies to make sure you're hitting your daily nutritional needs. Have I eaten a rainbow today? Once I've made and displayed this crudite mezze onto the large olive wood, I love to display food in a pretty way. I will show you how I make my very simple and the yummiest hummus. We enjoy it and I've taken it to parties for years. We eat hummus many times a week. It's pre-made, so perfect for snacks. I often freeze in snack tubs when I batch make it. And of course, it's very protein rich, so it's perfect. And my favorite way to make tasty guacamole. All recipes I'm sharing with you today, I've made and improved 15 years, taken to parties, served to guests, and always they're loved. So I know that you, your family, and your guests will enjoy these recipes too. Now that is one pretty mezze tray. My two boy fur babies watching me in the kitchen. Time to make hummus. I adore hummus. It's so tasty. It's rich in protein, vitamins and minerals. It's got impressive health benefits like improving digestion, good for weight loss, can improve your bone, muscle and skin health and aid in lowering cholesterol. So it's super good for you, but best of all, it's blooming tasty. I start by preparing my lemon juice. I use six of my end of season garden lemons. So three regular lemons from the supermarket will be perfect. I like to add two teaspoons of tahini. Hummus is so simple to make. It includes just a few ingredients and it's a dish I constantly taste test to get it perfect as no lemon has the same amount of juice in it and no garlic clove is the same size. I add each ingredient little by little because of the large quantity. This helps get the flavor perfect and helps when using the hand blender. I begin by mixing my tahini with half my lemon juice and half my water to make a smooth kind of paste. Then add some olive oil. Olive oil gives flavor and makes the hummus creamier. I crush three cloves of garlic to begin with. We love garlic in my house. You may prefer a little less. I will add more later when a taste test. I soaked 500 grams of chickpeas last night and boiled them first thing. Dried chickpeas are so cheap. Making hummus yourself not only is healthier, but it's amazing value. Freshly boiled chickpeas also makes blending much easier as you can boil them to be very, very soft. I always make this quantity or double this quantity as I batch make it and freeze it into 500 milliliter tubs to defrost for snacks and lunches. It's great to have healthy snacks on hand. Then you don't snack on something naughty. Adding the ingredients gradually helps when blending. I find it easier to use my hand blender as I can assist in mixing it and easily unclog the blades when necessary. You can use any type of blender to make hummus. Just be super careful it doesn't overheat and burn out. If you use a spoon to unclog your blades, make sure you turn the power off first. Add more chickpeas, salt, olive oil, water and lemon juice to lubricate and blend. I also added two more cloves of garlic. So that was five skinny cloves of garlic in total for 500 grams of dried chickpeas. Add the remainder of your chickpeas and then the rest of your ingredients by taste testing to make your perfect flavored hummus. Time for me to tub some of this hummus into 500 milliliter pots and freeze it for an easy meal another day. Time to make super tasty guacamole. These are all the ingredients I use plus pink salt. I'd use half my lemon 
and finely cube half of my chili pepper. Guacamole is a super healthy and quick dip to make. It's usually whatever's dipped into the guacamole that may be unhealthy. But stick to veg and you've got a very nutritious and super tasty snack. Into my pestle and mortar, I've added my chopped chili and crushed my clove of garlic. I finely cube a third of my large onion. A small onion would have been perfect. I add half the chopped onion to my pestle and mortar and half set aside in a bowl for later. I roughly slice a small amount of coriander to add to the pestle and mortar. Then I bash and grind the onion, chili, garlic and coriander in the pestle and mortar into a rough but tasty paste. Guacamole is nutrient dense and has impressive health benefits. With more potassium than a banana, it's heart healthy, with monosaturated fatty acid, helps lower cholesterol, triglycerides, has lots of vitamins, antioxidants and fibre, it's good for your skin as well as bloating. I've transferred my tasty paste from my pestle and mortar into a bowl to add my other ingredients to. These avocados peel perfectly. To my bowl, I added one and three quarter avocado, breaking into chunks so I can mash it with a fork easily later. The final quarter of avocado, I cube quite small and set aside. I de-seed three yellow and three red cherry tomatoes and then slice them into small cubes. The small cube tomatoes, onions, avocado, a little more finely chopped chilli, chopped coriander are all added at the very end to create a variety of texture and taste. I very finely chop a quarter more of my chilli and more coriander. We love coriander, so I chop quite a bit. Time to mash up my perfectly ripe avocado with a fork. If your avocado is not yet ripe enough to make this beautiful guacamole, you can wait or use my speed ripening hack. I'll link that above. I've mashed and mixed one and three quarters of my avocado with the paste I made earlier in my pestle and mortar. Now I will add my lemon juice, which was half a lemon, and my finely chopped onion, chilli, tomatoes, avocado and coriander I had set aside. To me, this mixture creates the perfect taste sensation. Look how pretty it is. It is stunning. Healthy, fresh, add a little pink salt to taste, and it's ready. Fabulous. Now we have a special, super tasty, healthy and nutritious lunch. if I was not making sushi. I love, love, love sushi, so does my husband. It's such a special food to eat for a special occasion. So let's head to Japan and make some plant-based, vegetarian and vegan sushi. You're going to love this. This is the simplest way to make sushi. It is healthy, it is nutritious, and it tastes divine. Whoever you make it for will love you for it, and you'll love it too. I'm making 700 grams of sushi rice. This would be an evening's dinner for four to six people, or for me and my husband, it's a massive spread for two evenings. It keeps great in the fridge. You can even make it the night before if you want to. If you want to wow people at a party or convince them to be vegan or plant-based or vegetarian, this dish might just do it. So, let me show you how to make my really easy, healthy, tasty sushi. If you haven't already, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more What I Eat In A Days. Thank you so much for joining me today on my birthday, What I Eat On A Special Occasion vlog. Love you for being here. Thank you so much. Let's make sushi. Sushi is a dish of love. It's nutritious art. There are quite a few ingredients for sushi. Take a photo of any of these ingredient screens if you need to. Make sure you have a few hours to make the perfect sushi or a helper would be ideal. Sushi is healthy art you must invest time and love into. The sushi I will show you today is tastier than I've personally ever had in a restaurant and it's way more nutritious too as I add the variety of rainbow veg and tofu for protein. The most unhealthy part of this dish is the sugar needed to season the rice. The sushi rice is not brown whole grain rice. Use this if you prefer. I like to be authentic 
and sushi rice does contain protein. After weighing 700 grams of sushi rice, I wash my rice in clean water until the water runs clear. Then I soak my rice for a good half hour before cooking. For 700 grams of sushi rice, I use one liter of water and let it soak for half an hour to an hour. Then I let the rice cooker do the rest. I cut my tofu into one centimeter square and long strips. This is the ideal shape for rolling into my sushi. Tofu is like a sponge. It's essential to press as much water as possible out of your tofu, like squeezing the water out of a sponge. This allows the marinade to sink into the tofu and flavor it. If the tofu is already full of water, the marinade can't sink in as it's already full. I don't have a tofu press, but kitchen towel and a heavy book work just fine in around 20 minutes. I like two different flavors for my tofu for my sushi. I pair one tablespoon of yellow Thai curry paste with a tablespoon of garlic and ginger paste. My next marinade is spicier. I use one tablespoon of chili and garlic sauce and one tablespoon of Thai red curry paste. Add the juice of one lemon to each marinade, a little olive oil and a little pink salt if desired. If you can marinate your tofu 24 hours before, great, but these marinades will be amazing in just an hour. These two marinades are super tasty because of the flavours. The lemon juice and the olive oil help the flavours sink into the tofu, making delicious flavoured tofu and super yummy sushi. I add my pressed tofu to the marinades, make sure they're fully coated and turn every so often while they marinate. I air fry my tofu to make it crispy. I cook it on 190 for around 15 minutes. After about eight minutes, I make sure to check on it, give it a good turn or a shake, and keep an eye on it for the last five minutes to make sure it gets crispy but not burnt. My air fryer cooks my tofu perfectly in 200 gram batches, ideal for two flavors of tofu. Let's flavor this rice. A super important part of sushi is flavoring the rice perfectly. I use seven tablespoons of sugar, nine tablespoons of rice vinegar, and two and a half teaspoons of salt, then microwave. Once the salt and sugar have dissolved, I carefully mix the seasoning into my rice, making sure every grain is coated, loose, but sticky. The range of rainbow vegetables I add to my sushi provide fantastically different flavors, a wide assortment of vitamins and minerals, and beautiful colors. I cut my carrots into very long strips, only a couple of millimeters wide, and set aside neatly to use in the sushi rolls once all my veg is prepped. Avocado, of course, is very nutritious, but in sushi, it acts like glue, sticking all the ingredients together. So I add a slither of avocado to all sushi rolls. That's my avocado glue hack. I use one quarter of each color pepper. I chop the top and bottom off to create straight thin slices as these are easier to stack and roll. I thinly slice my cucumber into long strips a couple of millimeters wide. I only use the rigid part of the cucumber in my sushi. I discard, eat, the seedy middle part. Remember, we've been making sushi now for a while. I'm hungry. And finally, after all the preparation, we can now make sushi. I wrap my sushi mat in cling film. This is particularly useful for when making California rolls, but also it just keeps it clean. I lay all my ingredients out within easy reach and tip. I have a little bowl of water to wash my hands and also a towel because your hands get really sticky when making sushi. I spread my sushi rice across my nori sheet, making sure it's fully covered and then pack the rice down. Seaweed is a superfood that's rich in protein. It contains vitamins and minerals like calcium, iron, iodine, copper, so it's really healthy to include in our diet. Time for sushi art to begin. I select a flavor tofu, then add different colored veg, but never too much, some avocado as glue, to create different looking and different flavored sushi rolls. You can play around with this however you fancy. It's time to get creative and play with your food. To roll, Hold your ingredient as you tightly roll. You've got to pull this back on itself and pack it tightly, then finish rolling. If you don't get this tight enough, the ingredients will fall out when you cut this later. California rolls have rice on both sides of the nori sheet. 
To make a California roll, I have the shiny side up, normally it's down. I add my rice, pack it and flip it. Then add rice again. Then I fill it like normal. I add more veg and more tofu and more avocado glue to these fatter California rolls. California rolls need to be rolled super, super tight. And I like to give it a bit of a friendly squeeze. I sprinkle California rolls with black sesame seeds. Not only does it give it an amazing taste, it makes it less sticky, easier to cut. When making regular maki rolls, place your nori sheet shiny side down. The textured side grips the rice better. If you fancy, you can add vegan red or green pesto to your rice before your ingredients for a different flavour and colour. Eee, it's time to slice and display this sushi. Using a sharp knife, mine's not perfect, cut your California and your maki rolls into widths of 2 to 3 centimetres and display. I love to display on slate. I think it gives it the perfect touch. We serve with different makes of wasabi, soy sauce and pickled ginger. Thank you lovelies for joining me today on my birthday, what I eat on a special day. I hope I've given you some helpful ideas, inspiration and tips to wow your family, friends or guests and you enjoy eating and serving this special food as much as I do. Before you leave, say hi in the comment section below and tell me where you're watching from today. I look forward to seeing you again next time in my next What I Eat in a Day. Have a beautiful day, lovelies. Bye. Hi, baby. Honey, we're not eating this right now. You like this hat? You really like this hat? Baby, we're not eating this right now.